Hey guys, episode 15, we are back. Hard to believe that so many months have gone by now. I've got the 15th podcast. I've got two awesome guys with me. My right-hand man, Azda, week by week. And I've also got one of my TS coaches. Uh, he's also become an osteopath path this year. Uh, I rate him highly. He's like an adopted son to me. He means a lot to me. He was a captain of one of my teams in this league. We've had an amazing relationship. It's going to be a long relationship moving forward. And I absolutely think the world of him. Azda, I do love you too, mate, but I love Ken more. That's so, Azda, <laughs> how you first? Welcome, mate. How you been? What's going on? Uh, everything okay? Mate, everything's okay. Um, pretty boring on my end, mate. Um, I'm in desperate need of a haircut. I've been copping grief um, uh, with some comments for this podcast about my hair. So I've got to learn to do something about that hopefully this weekend. But to be honest, I'm a bit weird out about having to go out and be around people, mate. It's uh, a foreign concept to me, really, uh, having to go out and sit in the hairdressers or something like that. So I don't know how I'm going to feel about that at all. Well, you have been a distraction, mate. That hair is absolutely been hard to deal with and cope and focus on. So yeah, please thanks, mate. Do change, mate, because then we can focus more on the actual segment and what your hair do. Yeah, that's uh, right. That's right. Look after your back cracking size, mate. I hope the jungle gets trimmed and looked after and uh, maintain its natural beauty. So hey. you for that, champion? Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you. But we've got a good-looking rooster on in Cam Hutton, mate. So how about you introduce him? All right. Well, Cam Hutton, he is, like I said, he's one of our coaches at TS. We rate him highly. He's an osteopath. So we're going to discuss our concerns moving out of COVID into the new version of what we call the restricted normal. And we're just going to discuss on cautionary measures, uh, expectations, management of the mind, body, and also getting back to, like, as I said, about socialising, getting back into the socialising with others. We all might think it might be easy, but in fact, it might be more difficult than people think. It's been a while. Uh, long time coming, um, but yeah, we know everyone's going to be eager, but we've got to be very careful with each step we take through our progression. So, Cam, let's start off with you, mate, and let's get into straight into it. Mental, the mental side, the physical side, and the social side, how they all working together and how they're important for each other. Um, and what do you think we should suggest to the athletes coming back? And also the parents, also the coaches, um, you know, expectations, what we expect to get out of it. And we've got to understand one thing. We're not going to get the same result in half the time. We still need to progress through the development process in a safe, manageable manner. So, Cam, what are your thoughts, Cam? Thanks for having me on, boys. Um, yeah, look, I think it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Um, the first thing that everyone comes back to is how, how physically fit are you, how prepared are you? Um, that's the first question that anybody asks. How much did you run? How much did you lift? How much did you work out? How much did you shoot? Um, and that's the focus and that's fine because it's important, you know, we want to look after our body and we want to look after what we're doing on the floor and off the floor and all those things so that we're ready and we're prepared. But I think people are going to neglect a lot the, the kind of social and mental side of that. You know, we've been, for some guys, it's been nearly 12 months from competitive sport, even though they may have done some training sessions or some preseason stuff. And we haven't been in competition for nearly a year. The juniors haven't been in competition for you know, six to nine months. And so to to come in from doing nothing and having to be super focused and be super engaged and just thrown back into a team environment where you there's other people relying on you, that's a really hard thing to do. Um, and even socially, you know, having to, as I said, it's a foreign concept at the moment to walk out and be with 10 other, 10 other people and have to deal with problems and find solutions and even just be close enough to be engaging with them. And so I think a lot of that is going to play into kind of the transition period of coming back and, and people getting in the right headspace really to, to then allow them to to enjoy it again. It's going to be hard. Yeah, most definitely. I, I think, the, Dazza, I, I, for me, so we're probably ready to or going to try and be ready to launch into next next season of basketball here. And um Doing the seeing a lot of the youngsters that are probably going to come back uh, for me as a coach, I'm incredibly concerned around, and I think Cam touched on it before, is around people are going to be super excited and pumped up to be back, and it's a, it's going to be great to see all these young athletes back you know, on a basketball court or footy field or whatever it is. Um, and they're going to be absolutely rearing and revving to go. They're going to go full speed as much as they can straight away. And particularly given, you know, it'll probably be a tryout process and things like that first first up or straight up. Um, 
you're going to probably see Cam, and you might be able to talk around a little bit more, is um, obviously there's going to be a heap of adrenaline. People are going to go really try and bust their ass straight away. But there's going to be probably that tipping point, and that might come a little bit quicker than usual. Would that be right to say, physically? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, yeah. that's a really fair comment. Um, I suppose... There's going to be some people that come in super prepared and you're going to be like, wow, you've, you've put this time to use. But there's going to be, and probably more likely, a large number of people, kids, adults that aren't ready to go physically. And so yeah. to go from nothing to working your absolute ass off to try and get a spot in the team or, you know, work hard and get stronger, get fitter, that's going to... You know that's going to be seriously stressful physically for your for your body. You know, you, if you if you're deconditioned and you're not ready to go, you can't just go from you know, zero to a hundred. You you need progressive overload. You need to be each week building it up, ramping it up, ramping it up. Um, and that's why when you you know you watch the pro sports and stuff, they talk about peaking mid season. You know, when is the athlete going to peak? When are they going to find their feet? When are they going to hit mid season finals form? It's a process, and, and that's a process normally anyway. That now we've just amplified tenfold because of the situation we're in. Yeah, yeah. We also got to be careful of so with your season as coach. You need, you're going to have to accept it's going to be a slow start, but earn a strong finish. Absolutely, not a strong start because you'll have a slow finish because you'll have injuries, you'll have concerns, yeah. you'll have things that go wrong, and it just won't be a, a nice, well-oiled you know machine through the season. So slow start, progress into a strong finish. But also worry about the ones who, and I know that people have done work themselves, but they're nowhere near competitive conditioning. Mm. So even though they think they're ready, they're going to say, oh, I've done all this. No, you've nowhere near what you could have done or what you should have done because you haven't been able to because you don't do so much by yourself. You don't do so much work in the space you had. So no one's going to be that 100% ready. And the coaches got to be also careful that just come training sessions when you've got the ones who have done the extra work. And there's no right or wrong if you have or you haven't. I understand if kids have struggled and just thought, you know what, I need a break from it all and I need to actually let myself mentally heal and understand what the hell is going on. But just because you've got strong kids training, it doesn't mean the ones who are tagging along have to keep up. That's it's right. going to be spread evenly across the floor that, okay, we might have kids who are a little bit more better prepared. Some who are going to be less prepared. It's not right or wrong, but they're going to be treated equally and fairly where – yeah, you can't make the Talim keep up with the ones who have done whatever they've done for whatever reason because we don't know the circumstances. That's so right. we need to be careful on what our expectations are and who our comparisons are with and are we going to be result-driven or purely re-engaged yeah. focused. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. that yeah. makes sense, mate. Yeah, we spoke about it uh, with the club on with the Tigers. We spoke about it at the coaches' meeting not long ago uh, where we all got together virtually, mind you, not physically together. <laughs> but um, we, we spoke about... Um, and it was a great message that came from our director of coaching is it's just going to be great to have the kids back. And mm. it, it, it's not going to be so much a season about just chasing all of these results. It's just going to be about getting the kids back on the court, getting them enjoying the game that they love again. That's just the number one priority. Um, and maybe, I mean, that should be the priority all the time, don't get me wrong, but um, maybe I think this this coming year or season, um, that's just got to be the number one focus. The results can they're just going to be what they're, they're going to be. Uh, it may, you may have a team that or a group of guys that are ready to go early because they have kept up some level of conditioning. But I would guess a majority will not be in great condition to start with. And it's just going to be building them back up slowly, bit by bit, I think. And you've got to be patient with it. And you've just got to remember the real reason why you're there is just for the love of the game that you're, well, that you're playing. Well, in theory, yeah. we've already got the result. We're back. That's We're the result. Back. That's, that's, the that's, result. That's, yeah. that's the achievement of all achievements. Yeah. And one thing I'd like to be just everyone to be cautious on, no judgment. I don't want to know no. why you haven't been doing and what you could have been doing, what you should have been doing, but you didn't do. That does yeah. that's immaterial. We don't know the circumstances. We don't know what they went through. We don't know just because we think they're strong doesn't mean they are. Just because they whatever, whatever. We don't judge them. We say, hey, yeah. we're back together. Yeah. Let's find an outcome of whatever that outcome is, but collectively together. There's no judgment. Yeah. Um, so, Gam, going back into the mental health, uh, the, the mental, social, physical, there's a three-circle ring that we do and it all links yeah. up. And can yeah. you just go into an explanation on how that works and what that means and why it's so important that I reckon a lot of kids, if they have, they're probably focused more on the physical side. Yeah. Realising that they're probably neglected the mental and the social side, which then will have an impact and 
so forth. Can you explain how that circle of rings work or that means, please? Yeah, cool. So without trying to, I could talk about it forever. So with it, keep it short and sweet. <clears throat> it's something that I brought to you, well, probably start of the year and we, we discussed it. Um, it wasn't something that I, I kind of worked through in my osteo studies or anything like that. It's something I found in year 11 health that I didn't really understand or respect until such a time as I was then treating patients and, and saw a lot of it. So essentially what it is, is the World Health Organization like defines health as a, a state of total well-being between your physical, mental and social health. So people ask you, you walk down the street, hey, how are you? And everybody's first response is, I'm good. And that's because they're not sick and they're not sore and they're up and about and they're out. The, the question is, and this is becoming more prevalent at the moment, is mental health and people are talking about it. People don't respond to the question of how are you or are you healthy with thinking about that side of it as such. So they all interact. And I suppose the, the key point, and if someone is truly healthy and in that sense, is that they've got a really stable physical base. They're, they're healthy, they're fit, they're they're absent from illness, they're you know doing really well physically. Their mental health is great. They've got strong values. They work hard on what they enjoy. You know, they can deal well with stress and all those kinds of things. And they, they have social networks around them as well, that they've got family and friends that love them. They've got people they can talk to. And having all of those things combined is what we need to start defining being good as, not just my ankle's better. Um, and I think that the way that those relate particularly in a team sport environment such as basketball is more important than than ever and is going to be more important than ever because like we've already spoken about we've been socially isolated for a long period of time mental health is going to be bigger and badder than it ever has been because of 2020 and coronavirus and people are deconditioned so we've got as like we've got aspects of every portion of that all intertwining and and causing you know, issues with people's overall healthy state. And I think that's going to be really important going forward that we we take a step back and we go, okay, is this kid struggling because they didn't do enough running on the, during coronavirus? Or is this kid struggling because they worked their ass off to get their body right, but they just haven't spoken to anyone for six months? And so they're just really struggling to be here talking to me like, and, and as a coach, and you guys would know better than I do, you know, having experience coaching high-level teams and stuff, if you get, you have to approach each person a certain way to take on feedback. And if we've been socially isolated for six months, the way that we take on feedback is going to change. And yep. so yeah. Yeah. they may be feeling awesome on the floor, feeling great. They work, to, they work super hard. Their body's ready to go. They're strong. They're fit. They're healthy. And then you come over and give them a little directive to say, hey, I don't want you to run that set that way or I want, I want you to focus on this. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. what's going on? And that's that's going to be really interesting to see how that, that plays out. I suppose yeah. my question for you guys would be, as you touched on it before about, you know, and so did Darren about setting team expectations about this year isn't necessarily about results. Mm. But for the kids who've had 12 months off, it, it's going to be. And so how do you how would you guys approach coming in and saying to your ten your ten guys and girls, hey look, we're just here to develop, we're going back to twenty five minutes of ball handling at the start of each session and we're going back to doing layups before we're doing block jump shots before we're shooting from the elbow, you know, like going back to super basics. Yeah. When kids just want to get back and play. Like how how do you guys approach that? Yeah. Oh, good question, Cam. Look, for me, um, you're spot on there with fundamentals. So um, my thing has always been, and probably a little bit to my detriment from the outside looking in, the, the way I'm perceived as a coach, is um, I'm big on fundamentals and getting those super sharp and right. Um, and uh, uh, I would be surprised if a lot of um, athletes in this period have gone away and strictly worked at, um, you know, being super sharp with their fundamentals. Uh, We've seen, they've probably been able to see a lot of YouTube, a lot of, uh, you know, NBA and whatnot when that sort of came back and they've seen all the highlights and the, the amazing things that these athletes do. Um, but I would be surprised if a lot of athletes have gone away and worked on their fundamentals um, and just kept those sharp. So for me, um, it's definitely about 
the message when we come back will be we're starting from the very foundation of our fundamentals and we're just going to slowly build up from there. We want to get those right because we're not going to enjoy the fact of being back and competing um, if we can't get those right to start with. And I think someone explained it to me once. Um, the analogy was you can't build a brick wall without a solid foundation. So there's no point trying to just stack a heap of bricks up and think you're just going to get, um, you know, uh, a gradual increase in performance or athletes at their best if you can't get your foundations right, which is your fundamentals. So that's probably the more or less the message I'll be going with. I don't know about you, Dazza. Um, we'll put you under the pump now, mate. What do you think? Uh, to be fair, I'm not saying I was, I'll, I'll do what I've always done. Mm. I'd get the group together first. Yes. Maybe give them a bit of a, a, a light training session of not worrying about the technicality. Just get mm. them trained. You know, if they're missing laps, if they're doing some things wrong, I wouldn't care. Just the fact they're training and not worry about a coach overemphasizing every key ingredient because that's no. not what they need for the first session. No. So I'd get a rough session out the way. I'd probably half the session. The other half, I'd go and do my D-Day or start the integra integration with the team. I'd sit down with them. I'd start the socializing, get to understand each other, what they've been through. So where they're at, where they so where they were, where they're at, where they want to be as an individual and then mm. go that in a group format. So that's my D-Day defining day of who we are, where we want to be, where we want to go. Then I would actually work on that socializing, then the mental, you know, where they're at, how they feel, all the interaction, what you do in a group environment to get an understanding where everyone is. Yeah. And then I'd go back the week after and start my, my training sessions. But again, I'd be very careful on how much I correct in the first one or two sessions because if you're going to stop start, Coach is going to be adding energetic just as much as the kids. They're going to want to give information. They've got oh. something to study and watching YouTubes and watching games mm -hmm. and oh, I've got all these new ideas in there. Yeah, I know you're excited. Yeah. But you remember, the kids just want to get back and get their bodies moving. Uh -huh. My priority is technicality will come, build the environment, build the culture, let them just play and train with a bit of freedom and then start honing in the details over the progression mm -hmm. which means your season will be a slow start but you will have, and Cam knows how I coach. Every time I coach, we have a strong finish in all my teams. We have a smart, slow start, and we're feeling it. We're, we're working at it, but we strong we strongly finish. So that's how I do it. I wouldn't be worried about the X and O's and the execution of the technical aspects in the first couple of sessions. I'll just give them freedom, let the bodies unwind, go through the momentum, and then start to say, okay, I know where we're at. I know what they need. And then I'd build a philosophy around that within the first couple of weeks. Does that make sense or do I just go overboard here? That nah, makes perfect sense, mate. I mean, definitely, there's going to be a lot of coaches out there. That's probably the other point, a great point that you raised. You know, they've been away studying and doing whatnot. Also, looking at YouTube and got all these great ideas, but we just need to remember that we're, we're starting for a very, very far back and low basis time, aren't we? So, yeah, getting the kids back and enjoying it, that's, that's the first step, isn't it? Well, then we can go probably back to Cameron then and say, okay, mm. Cam, we're not sure what you're doing with your basketball, um, but just say that it was youth league this year and you were going back. As a player, and you've been a captain multiple times, what would you want as a player? I know you're a little bit higher level, but just pretend you're a 15, 16-year-old, you're going back to basketball. What would you want from your coach and from your team and the club to get you back started, ready to go? What would you, what would you expect? Uh, I suppose from my personal point of view, I'm one of the people that likes coming in with a lot of, like I, I would enjoy the heavy rain and the heavy instruction early. It's never been, um, I think, and I hope that my previous coaches can testify that I've been someone who takes on feedback pretty well. So for me personally coming in, I would just want to work and work and work and, and do all the nitty gritty stuff where I know they're guys that just come in and want to play. So... But I think from, from an athlete point of view, we you still want to balance. Like you want to come in and you, you just want to have a bit of fun early, to be honest. Like as much as, yeah, you'd have to go through your tryout process or you'd have to get into your, your fundamentals or even your team structures, there's going to be a period at the end of each session where you just want to play basketball. Like at the end of the day, we're all in it because we like doing it and we love playing the game and, and we all enjoy what the sport brings. So I think that, yeah, like I say, I would be one of the – ones that I, I would actually enjoy a really intense start, but I think that still does need to have balance with a bit of fun, just getting around your group, hanging out with your guys. Um, and I think our days at Werribee together, Darren, probably 
a testament to when you have a bunch of people on the same page working for the same goal and who enjoy being together you have success i don't think on paper necessarily our teams well, we had talent don't get me wrong and we had some really really good talent but as a general rule there were teams out there who you look down the list on a piece of paper and go these guys should be head and shoulders above this wherever you think thing but because we had such a good group and with such a happy environment and everybody got along don't get me wrong we had bumps in the road we had things happen you have you have disagreements and whatever but to have a, a good culture and a good environment where you can work through those things and and figure it out, out along the way meant that we had success and i think that you need that balance coming back at the moment too with with the with the hard work you need to have fun you need to be enjoying you need to be building culture like Aaron said before, this year is not going to be even necessarily about results. I think the coaches and the teams that do the best job of building their culture and getting through the first few months of the transition back into sport, the teams that do that best will be the ones that get the results at the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. And we've got to remember too that let's forget about the, the physicality. A lot of kids, strong kids, the weak, it doesn't matter. Confidence is going to be the biggest issue of all. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even, though, even though they're confident within themselves, they're not going to be confident because they're now inside a public space. They're now back in, in an environment where people are watching them. When you're training at yeah. home, no one's watching. No, when, you're doing your, when you're doing your um, Zoom sessions, you're at standstill. I don't see why I'm doing all the skills and thing and it's all at standstill. So the, cult, the environment's going to be so different to what they've been doing at home and they're going to be probably thinking they're prepared, but they're probably going to walk into a shock. And then coaches yeah. are going to be the same. They're going to think, oh, all my kids are going to be ready to go. And they're going to not realise that some of them are going to be so flat or hesitant to make that first step. Yeah. So, like I said, the balance, the word balance is going to be the crucial key on how you balance it, how you implement it, and the order of merit that you take that in is, is going to be the importance of your success. Is, is the yeah. order you choose, I don't know what's right and wrong because we're all different. Mm. I'm not going to say you should do X, Y, Z. Mm. But if you get the right order, the right balance, over the right amount of time, you'll get success. Yeah. I think so, and just just as I'm just going to try and step back a little bit and try and put myself in the in the young athlete shoes coming back through those doors for you know the first session, second se session um, of tryouts or whatnot. First thing they're all probably going to do is compare themselves to someone else that's there. Am I in the same shape? Am I doing the same things? Am I at the same level this person is? Blah blah blah. That's the mental side that I think Cam's probably going to touch on really well for us in the next few moments around that that comparison and. Um, you know, getting up mentally for, for what's about to come. Does that sound right, Kane? Yeah, absolutely. And I think everybody needs to understand that you, just because, and this is Darren's analogy, but just because we're all in the same storm doesn't mean we're all in the same boat. We're not in the same position through this. So just because you compared to the guy next to you are in different shape, that doesn't mean that you've worked any less or you've worked any more than them or whatever it may be, or that you need to be yeah putting yourself up against that person because you don't know what they've been through for the last however many months and you don't know you know they don't know what you've been through and vice versa so i think you need to have a sense of confidence in yourself which is going to be tough but to go in and say i'm here to put my best foot forward and do what i can because we've been in such a weird situation that again you don't know where people have been and what they've been through and so to then yeah, I mean, you should be comparing yourself at the start of that anyway, but even more so at the moment. And then further on from that, I think what is going to be important is learning to then, once you do get past that first few sessions, to then trust the people that are around you when you do get into your teams. So when you then get your 10 people, you know, yeah, our foundations are built on trusting each other. Yeah. We're living in a society that they say, don't trust anything. You know, don't go to the supermarket, wear your mask because we don't trust the person to do the right thing about you. We've had restrictions because our our people in charge of our state don't trust that our society can do the right thing. Like we're living in a moment, a time where everyone's like, you cannot trust anything. You need to look after yourself, which doesn't translate well to a team sport. And so being mentally engaged with I'm here to do my best but then to be, take it out a step further and say, I'm going to do my best and I'm going to trust that they're going to do their best. That's that's a really, really difficult thing to do, particularly for young kids, 
um, who just want to come back in and enjoy the enjoy the sport. So, I hope that yeah. answers your question, as. Yeah, no, it does, mate. Yeah. You say the word trust. Everyone's going to be skeptical yeah. on the word trust mm. and the truth. Because no one knows what's right and wrong anymore. Everyone's got so many different versions of events. And that could be whether it be oh. political, in the community, in sporting organizations. I reckon a lot of people have reflected on pre COVID, during COVID, and the after COVID. Mm. What was actual truth? Who should I actually trust? And where's my true support platform come from? Who is my close knit group that I need to trust and rely on to get me through the next phase? Um, as a with just uh, Cameron, sorry. Um, I still want to talk to you, Azza, so I'm not ignoring you. Eh? I love you. Eh? <laughs> nah, let's let's get into Cam. Cam, I'm just just uh, just uh, from your own personal aspect and on on on, on injury prevention and stretching or whatever. Some people do it cold. Some people do it warm. Then do the you know as they warm up, then do the stretches. Some stretch before. Um, what should coaches be very very careful of, and the players? But coaches need to be a little bit more accountable, knowing that we need to hold the kids back to the right pace. The kids also need to be accountable to ensure they're doing what they need to be doing to their body to make sure they're ready to train. So what are we looking for with, with stretching and, and preparation prior to getting back on the training track? So do we stretch straight away with rolling? Are we warming up, then stretching again? Should we stop in the middle and, tra- and stretch again? Should we, should we do more stretches than normal than you would in normal training sessions? Probably what I'm getting at. And how would you, how would you space that out over, say, an hour's training session? Yeah, okay. So like anything in health everyone's gonna have a different opinion so this is from my clinical experience my views the team that i work with where i work um but i think what is important is that you you don't have a single view of what you need to do it needs to be adaptive so um because everybody's body is going to change differently but i think there's a couple of areas that you really need to focus on the first one's going to be mobility so if Kids have done a lot of sedentary stuff at home, lots of time on the TV, the computer, their gaming consoles, laying in their bed on their phones. You know, their joints aren't at the same capacity to, to move and be mobile. You know? So we need, to, we need to think about mobility. Then we need to think about strength and we need to think about are they strong enough to do safely and well the tasks that I'm putting in front of them. So you're not going to go and get them to run 50 suicides in the first session because you're going to have a whole bunch of soft tissue injuries, right? Like you you can't go boot camp on these kids and and want to go, okay, we're going to all get fit because you've all done nothing for six months. You're just going to hurt every single one of them. So, and then I suppose the last one from there is what do we do around pre and then post exercise as well in terms of not rehab but prehab let's do stuff before we have to get to rehabilitating a a tissue Mm. or a joint or whatever it may be so from my perspective and the way that i like to do things pre-session uh you would focus on your mobility and your activation exercises and getting things working the way they're supposed to work and i think what we get caught up in and lots of young kids too is you see them stretch pre-game and they're all just sitting on the floor a cold hardwood floor in their hoodie and their trackies with no blood flow going whatsoever, their heart rate's at their base, and they're just sitting there hugging their knee or crossing their arms over or leaning towards their toes, and they're just doing static static stretching, static mobility, which has its place. Don't get me wrong. It has its place. But if you're prepping, if that's your preparation to then go and try and run a full sprint for 20 metres down the other end of the court, move laterally to guard someone, jump up for a rebound, if none of that's specific to what you're trying to do. So your warm-up phase needs to be, I'm trying to replicate at a lower intensity, but I'm trying to replicate what I'm about to do to get my body engaged and moving. So yeah. for me personally, my pre-game routine, Darren would have seen it or wherever, if anyone that's come and watched any of our games, been there beforehand, while other guys are shooting and stretching or whatever, I go to the side of the court and I go to start doing just some walkthroughs and then I'll do some lunges, then I'll do some squats, then I'll go down and do some hamstring mobility work through movement. And it's different for every person, but that that's the kind of stuff you need to be doing pre. You need to be doing movement stuff that you're going to replicate in the game. Whatever that works for you, that's fine. Everyone has their own thing. Do some slow slides, do some small jumps, get things moving, get things happening. Pre, you've ticked that box and you're ready. I think then during, I wouldn't do so much as stop and stretch and, and specifically do that stuff. 
what I would do is just say to them, you, there's no stationary work. So when you're having your water, walk. When you're having your water, at, at a minimum, stand. Just keep your body ticking over just enough to say, we're not going to let you get cold and seize up and get yeah. sore. We need everything to keep mobile, keep moving. And then post is probably more important than everybody even thinks because most kids will just chuck their shoes in their bag, put their slides on, walk out the door, hoodies on, go have a shower, lay on the couch, watch TV. And you're like, that's great, but you've just done an hour and a half worth of pretty intense exercise. You need to you need to be looking after that. And then that's where I would go towards some more gentle, not necessarily static. You still want to be moving. You still want to be dynamic. But that's where I would go to more. Let's have a gentle walk. Let's have a gentle stretch. You can sit down and do some of that cool down stuff and just give your muscles some length, give your joints some movement, get the roller out. You know, any spots that you may have copped a knock or any areas that you're feeling sore, give that some self-work through your rollers, give that a stretch, get the ice on anywhere that's sore for just for that really acute period for 10, 20 minutes post, and then you'll be in a much better place the following morning, drink heaps of water, all those things to then be set up for success for your next session the next day to then start the whole process again. And I think that's really important because... Like I said, we're going to get kids come in, put their shoes on, work their bum off for an hour, hurt themselves, go home, do no rep, like post cool down rehab stuff. And within three, four weeks, their first month is going to be hell because they're just going to hurt all the time. Yeah. So I think that that would be my approach. My focus would be heavily on pre-workout stuff, just keeping moving during a session, and then a strong focus on on post and looking after yourself as well. But I think the pre-work is going to be the most important part, getting yourself physically ready for what you're about to do instead of just diving in the deep end and start doing sprints when you've sat on the floor stretching your hamstrings for 20 minutes. I think that's the, that's probably the best approach, but it works different for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I, I absolutely agree, Cam. It's a great point, and I'll definitely be taking some of that away myself. Um, and it's probably um, by extension of all this is – after the session, if you don't do these things right and look after yourself and then you're going to front up for the next session and you're probably a little bit underdone, a little bit sore or whatnot, then we start to get, go again and we're starting to grate on the mental side. I feel sore, I don't feel great, and the physical side as well. Um, you're obviously yeah. underdone. So it, it can be a circle that um, if you don't do the right things from the start and getting good habits of just doing that ongoing, you can have that snowball effect where it's just going to get out of control, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And it's hard to, as we say, it's hard to then stay engaged when you've got something in the back of your head going, yeah. my foot's really sore, my foot's really sore, my foot's really sore. And so then you're not focused, then you start doing things poorly, you get a little down. Then the guy next to you, you're not worried about trying to help them and build that culture, build that trust. So like you say, there's a snowball effect for your body. Yeah. But as you say perfectly, it's going to start then affecting your mental health. It's going to then start affecting your social capabilities so it's it's more than getting your body ready it's it's getting yourself ready as a whole unit for what you're about to what you're going to go and try and achieve throughout the season yeah absolutely and touch on what you guys spoke about is the soreness coaches players we've also got to know what is just general soreness and we need to get through that because you're going to be sore for a few first few days it's like going to gym for the week you can't, you can't move but you haven't necessarily got an injury. You need to fight through that pain threshold. Yeah. Then on the flip side, we've got to be very careful when I say, hey, mate, just keep running out where it may be an injury. We've just got to be very delicate in, in that fine line on when to tell someone to push through and when to tell someone to back off, which is the hardest thing that anyone can do. Is it pain that's general or is it actually an injury that's about to occur and get worse? Um, that's going to be the hardest thing to gauge at this time because your body is so has been shut down for so long. It's going to be hard this year because the pain will probably be twice as bad as a normal general soreness as it would have been pre-COVID. It's a little bit sore, but you know what that is. But now the pain is going to be a little bit harder to understand and, and make a decision, which way do I go? Do I rest now or do I push through? Which is going to be interesting on how which way most people will go on that one. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just going to be important to to sit down and, and we've, we've harped on it all day, 
to, to make sure that each person is an, indivi an individual. Just because it, as and I ran the same amount of suicide, it doesn't mean that my body's going to be feeling the same. So if I run eight, he runs eight, but I go, I, I need to call it like I'm, I'm not doing well. I need to go do some lighter stuff or some shooting. And as is like, I'll go do eight more. I feel great. That's, that's fine. And that's where it comes back down what you're saying before about, you know, not comparing yourself to each other. Be happy in your own situation. Like we're back playing basketball. Just work within your space and, and do that well. Push yourself and push yourself hard. But it's okay if you're not at the same same time frame or same area as somebody else. So good example. So we say, just use push-ups as an example. All right, guys, we're going to do 20 push-ups. No. We want you to see if you can get to 20, but do what you can. Yep. So we're not getting the ones we're trying to get in the own, and then their training's going to become deteriorated because they've tried to do so much into one thing and they can't do the rest of the, of the things we're about to implement. So maybe we can the process or RA would be, let's set a number. If you can achieve that, great. But if you've got to stop before that, that's okay in the first couple of weeks. We just want to maintain a progression of increase on that number. Would that be fair to say, guys, a good way to look at it? Absolutely, yeah. I think I think that's right, Daz. Progression is probably a great word. Progression, building up habits. Uh, I think Cam sort of touched on that before around the whole progression of things as well. So um, I think that's spot on. All right, let's go personal. Um, oh. We're talking about social interacting, getting back into the, what we call, I'm going to say, the real world because it's been we have been in a bubble. It's unusual. It's weird, and it's it's. As uh, down to uh, Cam, and then I'll say something. As a, what are your thoughts on getting back out into the world of, of social socializing or meeting, greeting, and and I'm cautioning on avoiding the word. How's how have you been? Well, I've been in COVID nineteen, mate. I ain't got much to say. But <laughs> yeah. then we start going into the what the things have really got us all in that negative, you know, anxious feeling. How are you feeling about those first catch ups you have with people and trying to avoid the. I want to be positive. I don't want to talk about the what's happening and how much I'm being dragged down. Does that, does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, uh, that's, that makes sense, Daz. Look, for me, um, look, I, I, it's, by habit, I always ask how people are. It's just uh, it's a, it's a common common thing that I always do. But I think gen in general, conversation is um, more or less talking about uh, what, what are you going to get up to uh, going forward now, now that we're sort of returning to a little bit of a uh, different normal, but, um, you know, ease restrictions and whatnot. So w what are your plans going forward? Um, I know we, we had a catch up with a, some glo close group of friends the other last week with the, with young kids as well. So it was great for the kids to get together. But us adults were sort of standing around talking about, you know, what's next for us uh, as adults and what we're up to going forward. Uh, we can't wait, for example, to be in a position where we can go away for a bit of camping or whatnot. Um, uh, people are talking about already footy next year and different things like that. So I think it's more or less not so much about looking backwards, but just looking forwards, I think, around what some of the things you think you will be able to do, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Cam, what have you done? Have you done anything yet? Have you done anything exciting on your first step back to normality? Uh, we went out for lunch on Thursday. That was nice. That was so good. who's we? You and your lovely one? Me, me and my better half, yeah. So okay. Which is a great thing too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, she's she's good. She's good. She um within about ten minutes of Dan giving us some freedom, I had a text message saying we have lunch booked at twelve pm on uh, Thursday. You know, wear something nice because all we've worn is trackies and hoodies for the last six months. So yeah. that was a bit of fun. It was an interesting uh, experience, but it was good fun. Um, yeah, what, I think what, what, what was it like getting out to, to sit down and, and feel like, gee, I've just gone out? What was it like? Was it like you just won Tats Lotto? <laughs> oh, it, was, it was so nice. It was, it was an odd experience. Everything was obviously like a minimizing contact. Um, and you feel a little guilty sitting there with no mask on while you're eating and drinking, which sounds stupid because you're eating and drinking. Mm. But to take it yeah. off and have other people around, you almost feel like, oh, Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. I'm doing the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was it was a really good experience and it was nice to be out. And it was just nice to see even the night before when I rocked up to her place and, and was kind of walking down the street towards hers, just to see pubs and people, just that, that noise that you take for granted that you just ignore all the time, just to hear kind of a buzz of plates and and people feet and chairs moving and voices and stuff. That was just really cool to walk down the street and be like, 
there's like there's life going on again. Like where it's not it's not silence. And and she she lives in Port Melbourne, which probably puts a bit more context. Normally you walk down Bay Street and it is just choppers. There's people everywhere. There's noise everywhere. And you took that for granted, and it was a bit of a ghost town. So, yeah, to walk past some places and just to hear people having fun and enjoying it and, you know, have a few drinks and have some food was, was really cool. So that was a fun experience. Um, but I suppose moving forward, oh, just just find stuff that people like. I suppose we've got a little unwritten rule at the clinic that you don't ask people how they are in the, in the reception or the hallway because then they give you – terrible responses and drags in, down. Fr- in front of other people and it just looks and it's just yeah. it just builds this weird environment so we've got a, a little little unwritten rule that you ask people how they are when you're one-on-one and you can have those in-depth conversations and that's a private safe space but i suppose that kind of i'm going to translate a lot of that out to to what i do for the next few weeks too like my question when i'm dealing with someone in in person is it's not how have you been going during COVID. My first question is, what have you been doing when you've got your spare time? Because most people have found something, whether it's their garden, whether it's jigsaw puzzles, whether it's, I don't know, playing with the kids or they've started building something or that. People have made stuff happen to keep themselves entertained. And and often they're pretty proud of what they've achieved. Like there's been some pretty cool stories come out of this too. So what have you been doing? What have you been doing to keep yourself entertained? Have you found any great new shows? Have you found any new hobbies that you really love, you know? Oh, you're walking more. That's amazing. Or oh, what kind of jigsaws have you done? What pictures are you doing? Like little stuff like that, where you can just find the positive out of it, is gonna is a more important question than just as we said at the very start. How are you? Because it's a pretty, it's a bit of a can of worms. That that, that person could take that in any in any capacity. And that's you, true. You, it's, it's, you it's just, up, you're setting yourself up for failure if you ask them a you know, question like that. Well, I'm true. gonna I'm gonna make some hoodies that. I saw. I know COVID nineteen happened. I didn't sleep through it. I understand what it caused and what it created, and how we all hurt, and people made good decisions and bad decisions. And it was a mess. I know that. Please don't discuss it with me. I don't want to go back. To it. <laughs> I'm not ignoring it. I'm not. I'm not saying that you know. It's. It's. I'm. I'm going. I've changed my ways. I see things differently, and blah blah. But I'm going to say yeah. a sign. Do not discuss the need of COVID nineteen. I know the impact it's had. I've experienced it. I've seen it. I don't want to go through those emotions because. Yeah. You try to be out of water, be bubbling and, and energetic, yeah. but then you, you promise yourself not to talk about it. Then you get caught up talking about it and you go home mentally dry or you hang up or after walking, you go home mentally drained, you feel heavy, you think, why did I just discuss that? It was going, never going to be a, a positive outcome. It was just yeah. a the training. I didn't sleep through it. I'm aware of it. I don't need to discuss. Does that make sense? I just want to yeah. move forward. Yeah, yeah um, that makes sense. So like I think you can, there's a place for that though. Like if you're, I think if you take the avenue of like, what have you been up to or what are you looking forward to most of the rest? If you gauge that someone really needs to have that conversation, well, you can have it. You know what I mean? But, yeah. but for the for the most part, most people are just like, I do not want to hear the word COVID. Like, don't yeah. so it's, tell it's, it's, me about anything else, yeah. just not coronavirus. So yeah. it's like, hey, did you know we had COVID-19? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. You're right, and we should reword that. It's We mean that yeah. in the generic content where it doesn't yeah. need to be discussed. But if yeah. someone has struggled or they're yeah, not coping yeah, yeah. well, that's a different conversation again. We are the door is wide open. Uh, we'll open it for you if you're struggling to open it. You know, we'll do all that. But yeah, but generically, <laughs> over it, mate. Yeah. Um, so I'm catch. So watch Facebook today, guys. Me and Tim Devlin are finally catching up for a session. So we're going to crash it. We're going to burn Facebook, and we're going to be on social media going crazy. Um, I've seen him walk for walks, and, but I have not had to sit down. He lives around the corner. So I miss my mate Timmy Devlin. So today we're catching up for a bit of a feast and drink. So watch out. We hey, may be... mute your Facebook on Darren Hindle for an yeah, hour. Just, just give me the yeah, likes. And just... <laughs> well, yeah. I'll see some weird, strange photos of uh, unusual things. But um, well, we're going to go, guys. We're going to sign off. Um, yeah. so we'll go around the table. Um, as our thoughts on today, I think it's been great. But thoughts? Yeah. Great chat to Cam. Uh, I love the physical, mental and social aspect of what we've spoken about today. Um, there's some great lessons to take forward, even for myself. So I hope uh, the people listening do so as well. Um, but, yeah, just continue to look after each other as best you can. Camo? Yeah, it's been, it's been good to be here. See you boys up here every week and it's nice to contribute. Um, I think it's been a really good message about, hey, let's just figure out 
everyone's timeline coming back and let's do this right. You know, we're, we're, our focus is that we're back playing basketball and, our, or, and that doesn't have to apply to basketball. Our focus is we're back doing what we love. Yeah. Let's just give, let's just take the time to appreciate that and do it right. We don't have to jump straight into being, you know, elite athletes again. Let's do this the right way. Um, and I think that's a really important thing to do. And obviously I'm super passionate about all the, the other side of it in terms of health and mental social, physical health and stuff. So it's been really fun to, to discuss with you guys. Uh, we love having you on, mate. You're, you're, you're well-spoken, you're well-grounded, and we love the way you speak about things, mate. It's from the heart. It's true. It's real. Um, focus for me, I'd say, is create the culture, maintain the, just maintain engagement, and then progress through the development platform without, without having high expectations or demands, and don't judge. Yeah. Just see for what it is, accept what's going on, and then progress it together you know, as individuals and as a group collectively together so good luck with everyone getting back on the court uh, coaches players parents everyone getting back to some sort of normality um we congratulate everyone to get through it we know some are still struggling and they may still struggle when we come out of this or some may start to struggle when we come because that's one thing we probably haven't discussed but for a lot of people especially small business the, the, the true tough times may be coming when we reopen mm. what happens what doesn't happen restrictions are in place you know, the, the, the things that are still so unknown and uncertain that we just don't know where we're going to be for another few more months yet. So the pain, there's still going to be some pain, but together we hope to do it, you know, we'll get through it. So as a normal, stay safe, stay well, stay strong. If you're feeling down now, do not hesitate to reach out. We will discuss it with you. We mean that generically about COVID, but yeah. personally, guys, we know struggles are still there and we know there are yeah. still struggles to come. We Absolutely. aren't clear out of that storm just yet. Um there's still another little storm floating around and we don't know, really know how that's going to come, the impact it's going to have. Um, but be bright, embrace it, be ready for it, and let's just get through it. We've done our hard yards. There's a few more hard yards to go. Excited. We're back. All right, guys. Thanks, Cam. We really appreciate you, mate. I'm very grateful. Thanks, guys. Aaron, Thanks, Cam. Aaron, yeah. Aaron, I can't wait to see you get that jungle all cleaned up um, <laughs> and get that little tribe that's playing in there out of there. So... Let's do it. Uh, love to all, and I think this was a great chat um, for men. All right, guys, stay safe, stay well. Much See love. you guys. Bye. See ya. Thanks, guys.